Hey guys, Tyler Berger here with Bass Fishing HQ. Today we're gonna to talk about how to piss a bass off. He's getting pissed. It's a little bit bigger than three pounds or two and a half pounds. Ooh, God. Got her. In the mouth. See that? That's a solid fish right there. Uh huh. Little bed fish in action. Alum Creek. Gotta love it. It's a nice one. Yes, sir. All right, fish. Back you go. Got him that time. It's a good one. Oh, yep. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. In the mouth. Gosh. That was fun. That fish would come up to the bed there and it would spin. It, I would take it off, it would spin around, and it would eat it right away and spit it out quick, and I was never fast enough on the trigger. That time, I was. That's a good one. That was fun. Nice one. Back you go. So when it comes to bed fishing, there's a lot of different, almost techniques that you can do to try to catch a fish that's actually on a bed. And personally, my probably favorite way to catch a bass is, is really to piss it off, really to kind of make it angry. And there's kind of a little bit of a technique to really doing that. And we're gonna talk about that today because I think it's probably one of the better ways to actually catch a bass, if not one of the quicker ways. But the thing to know is that every bass is different, right? Bass are kind of like people, right? They have personalities. And so some bass may respond to kind of ticking it off where other bass may not. So you really have to be able to read that bass when you come up on it, see what it's doing, and then go from there. Now before we get into the rest of the video, guys, please go check out columbusbarrelco.com. You can pick up an awesome hat, awesome bass hat there. Use the coupon code BASS25 and go and get you a cool hat. So when it comes to bed fishing, there's a couple of different things that you can do to catch a bedding bass. One is the kind of find the area on the bed where the bass has actually laid its eggs. And this is gonna be a really small spot on the bed. And it's a very, it's a spot that the bass is going to protect very aggressively. So if you can find that spot that is on the bed, which you can't visually see it, you basically just have to pitch your bait out there and drag it across the bed and all different angles to try to find it. If you can find it, you might be able to find this sweet spot where the bass is gonna react to your lure a lot quicker than it will anywhere else in the bed. That's one way to, to bed fish. Another way is, like I said, is, is really pissing a bass off. And the best way to do this is to actually take your lure, whatever you're using, a soft plastic, and actually kind of hit the bass with your lure. Now, when it comes to that, I really like fishing a tube. Um, some people don't like fishing a tube, but the thing that's nice about a tube is that you can hop it on a bed and it'll actually kind of hop up and flutter and almost stay in the exact same place. And that's really beneficial when you're fishing a, a small area or a small bed. And so a lot of times what I will do to tick a bass off is there's kind of 
there's kind of two different approaches to doing this. One, you can actually kind of cast your lure over, cast your tube or your soft plastic over the bass and actually kind of pop that bait right into the bass's face. I mean, you're gonna hit that fish in the face and it's gonna take them off, right? And eventually you'll start to see the bass will actually kind of flare on the on the bed as you as you pop it into its face it'll actually kind of flare it'll actually open its mouth and even kind of suck in the the lure at times and so if you keep doing that and you keep doing that eventually what's going to happen is that bass is going to suck in that whole bait and it's going to do one or two things it's going to either spit it out real quick or it's going to suck in that bait and it's going to actually run off the bed and i've seen that a lot so you can either be really fast on the trigger when a fish sucks it in real quick and set the hook and catch that fish, or you can actually keep popping that bait into the fish's head until it finally sucks it in and it'll, it'll suck it in and it'll move off the bed with it. And that's a great time. Now that's, that's one way you can tick it off. The other way that can be really, really good to tick off a fish is actually to kind of do the same thing. You're gonna pop your, your soft plastic into the fish, but hit it on like the tail or the back side of the fish. Now, what this does is it gets a bass to spin around real quick. And when they spin around real quick, a lot of times that it, it's like they it's like they don't know what hit them in the tail and all of a sudden they spin around and they're looking all over for it. You'll you'll literally see bass do this. They're looking for it and, and a lot of times what I will do is I will hit that fish in the tail, it'll spin around, and as it's sitting, as the bait is now sitting on the bed, I'll just give it a little bit of movement just to let that bass track it, and you'll see that fish come up and inhale that bait real quick. Same thing, it's either gonna inhale it and spit it off the bed, or it's gonna inhale it and it's gonna move off the bed. So that can be another way to catch a bass, to kind of piss it off. So really, that's kind of the, the, the when it comes to pissing a bass off, really in my mind, that's the best way to do it is you're gonna take a bait and you're basically gonna hit the fish with it, right? You kinda, you kinda beat them up, you get them ticked off to where they're finally gonna just say, forget this thing, I'm gonna eat it no matter what it is, and they're gonna move off with it. Now, the one thing that I have found is that sometimes you'll get these bass that are literally like, I call them like log bass, right? They're literally just sitting on the bed and they're not moving, they're hardly reacting to the bait. It's like, they're just like a log. They're literally just sitting there. And I've seen that before where you can literally, like if this is the bass, you can yo-yo your bait on the bass and it's like not even moving. It's the craziest thing. But what I have found is that those are the bass that you wanna actually hit in the tail. Okay, so if you have a bass that's literally just sitting there, it's not moving, don't try to hit it in the head, hit that fish in the tail because what you wanna do is get that fish moving. And if you hit it in the tail, it's eventually not gonna like it and you'll see it spin around. And the more you can get to spin around, the more you get it ticked off, eventually it's gonna commit to the bait, it's gonna eat it, you're gonna have that chance to set the hook and catch that fish. So again, when you're fishing, those are kind of the different approaches. I really like to piss the bass off. Now, when it comes to equipment, let's go over that real quick. I, I prefer, honestly, to use a, a rod from seven foot three inches to seven foot six inch, uh, a medium heavy. This is actually what I just use for my flipping stick. The biggest thing with this is you don't wanna set the hook way too hard, okay? I tend to be a hard hook setter, right? It's just, it's in my blood, it's what I do. I will slack line fish all the time and I typically have a good hook up right, but I know that it's not good on your equipment and particularly your line. If you're really close to that fish and you put a lot of pressure on a hook set, a lot of times you can break that line. And people like to use braid maybe sometimes. I just prefer to use fluorocarbon. I use a 20 pound fluorocarbon. I just like the fact that it's invisible to the fish and I feel like you're gonna get that fish to commit to that lure a lot quicker. And so just be careful with your setup. If you're a hard hook setter like me, you gotta, you gotta really think about it when you go to set the hook. Make sure you're not jacking them like you might do if, if you're frog fishing or something else. All right, you really still, I mean, you can set the hook hard if you got the good, if you got good equipment, 
but just be conscious of that. You don't want you don't want to you don't want to break your line, okay? Because I've done it before where you fish for a bedding fish for a half hour, 45 minutes. Finally, it, it finally eats the bait. It moves off the bed, the bed. You set the hook and you snap the line. You don't want to do that because if you break off that hook in that fish's mouth that fish is pretty much done for the day. It might shake the hook, but more than likely you've ruined that fish. And if it's a five, six, seven pound fish, then that could cost you a tournament. That could cost you a lot of money. So just be conscious that you're close to a fish and it's exciting, right? You, you finally see that fish biting the bait and you wanna jack them so hard. You just gotta be conscious. Hey, let's do a, a, a more of a medium hook set here. Get the fish hooked, get them in the boat. That's the important thing. So be conscious of that. I use a flipping, like I said, I use a flipping stick. I use an eight to one reel. I use 20 pound line. I use a tube with a three ounce, three eighths ounce weight. That's what I like. And to me, I don't like, typically with a tube, you're gonna use an extra wide gap hook. I really like the Trocar tube hook. I've used this thing for years and it is a phenomenal tube hook, right? And basically, if you've never bought it before, this is what it looks like, all right? It's kind of a funny looking hook, but it hooks them well. And the, the thing about it though, you do like a little modification I make is I typically will bend the, the tube just out a little bit, just a touch. You wanna make sure that it is, if anything, it's not gonna dig back into the bait, right? You wanna, you want it to come, see how it's just, there's a little bit of a, a gap there. So when I go and I actually text this rig it and I put it through the bait and I just barely skin hook it, it's gonna, when it pops out, you're gonna, you're gonna get that fish, when that fish bites on, it's gonna pop out, you're gonna set the hook, you're gonna get it in the boat. So use the Trocar tube hook. I like a five aught. Um, at least, um, sometimes a six shot. When it comes to color, I actually prefer to use like natural colors, like a, a green pumpkin. This is a, a watermelon red flake. I prefer to use those type of colors a lot of times. The only time that I will use like a bright colored bait um, is if it's very difficult to see the bass. Like sometimes you're 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 using a um, sometimes it might be like cloudy or rainy conditions and you're trying to bed fish, which is not ideal. Um, but using a white bait is going to allow you to see when that bass actually inhales that lure. And that way you don't run or risk the chance of actually foul hooking that bass. Um, so, but when it comes to like your standard kind of clear conditions, um, sunny still, the good bed fishing conditions, I actually like to use natural colors. I feel like you're going to get bit quicker. Um, but the, another key to bed fishing is just having a variety of baits to show a fish. I, I'm pretty stubborn. I like to use a tube. I feel like it works really, really well. And I, I don't seem to spend more than maybe 45 minutes actually working on a fish with it. Um, I might change the colors up a little bit, but bass again have personality. So one bass may respond well to a tube where one bass may respond well to a different style creature bait or a lizard. I know people like to fish lizards on beds. So anyways, I hope these tips help go at you, catch you a big bed fish. Guys, if you wouldn't mind, leave a comment below on the biggest bed fish that you've ever caught. I'm just really interested because I, the biggest one I've ever caught is like a little over five pounds. I live in Ohio. There's not a lot of giant fish here, um, but I can't imagine like bed fishing for like a 12 pounder or something giant. So leave a comment below if you've caught a really, really big bed fish. Also, please like the video, subscribe to the channel. I hope this helps you guys. I'll see you in the next video.